Hey, what's up guys? It's Grant here. I know some of you have been wondering where I've gone. Well, I've got an update video coming out in the next week or two that'll explain all the answers to your questions. I've got a big announcement to make, so keep your eyes out for that video in the next week or two, and I'll see you there. Hey guys, I'm Nate. Welcome back to the workshop. Not too long ago, we showed you how to build your very own bullwhip using paracord, BBs, athletic tape, and some PVC piping. Well, today we're gonna go over a couple of quick lessons on how to get your bullwhip to crack well without hurting yourself. First is the cattleman's crack. To do the cattleman's crack, you need to start out with the whip lying out straight behind you. What I'm going to do is bring my arm up into the 12 o'clock position and the whole whip will flip up in the air around and behind me. Once the whip is pointing behind me, not when it's above me, but when it's behind me, I'll then bring my arm back down to the six o'clock position. The whole whip will curl along. And then at the end, when the fall straightens out, that's where it cracks. The other type of crack I was doing is called the overhead crack. This type of crack is actually a reversal of which direction you're swinging the whip above your head. So to start out, I swing counterclockwise. If you're practicing this, you want to make sure that you can easily swing it without it touching the ground anywhere around you. And then when I get to about here and the whip is pointing straight behind me, I will reverse direction in a clockwise way. And the whip, which will be swinging above my head, will get that same curl in it that it does from the cattleman's crack. And then this last one, which again, I don't know if it has a name. I just sort of figured it out. It probably does have a name, but I'm pretty new at this sport. All I'm going to do is very quickly bring my arm forward like I'm throwing a baseball sort of sidearm. And then once I'm near the front, I snap my wrist to give it a little extra flick to it. Whip cracking 101. There you have it. That's three beginning whip cracks. There are ways that you can go in routines from one crack into another, and there are probably a dozen different ways to crack the whip that I don't know yet. I'm just learning this myself. We also had one viewer who directed me to another video that suggested a faster way even to build this bull whip. It uses some ball chain instead of BBs fit down inside the paracord. So we're gonna try throwing one of those together and see how well it works. Just like in the other video, my first piece of paracord is going to be long enough that it can stick out the back by about a foot. It will go the length of the handle and then it will have eight feet of paracord in front of the handle. There's our eight foot mark. I'm gonna use some tape to mark where the back of our long piece of paracord leaves the handle of our whip. Now I need nine more pieces of paracord which will get progressively shorter as they go down the length of the whip. We want our second piece of paracord to be 18 inches shorter than our longest piece. And after that, every piece will shrink by about eight inches. Eight inches shorter, cut it to tape mark. 10. There we go, we've got our 10 strands of paracord, so let's add some ball chain for weight. Now the ball chain is clearly not gonna have the same amount of weight per strand as BBs inside of paracord. So we're gonna try doubling the amount of chains that we have, maybe more. I don't wanna go as long as our longest or even our second longest cord, but I am gonna measure out our third longest piece of cord to make a chain that length. Now that piece of chain is about six feet long and this roll of chain comes with 30 feet on it. I'm going to add another piece, but to make sure we keep the taper of the whip nice and natural, I'm gonna shorten this one by about four inches. I'm just gonna keep going, adding pieces of chain, shortening it by about four inches every time. I have two rolls of this metal chain and we'll probably use all of it. Well, that's 10 strands. I think that's gonna be a pretty good weight. We now have 10 strands of paracord and 10 strands of our ball chain. Let's bundle them together, tape them up, attach them to our handle, and see if this whip will work. Actually, before I tape the paracord strands together, I'm gonna to tape all of the ball chain strands together. Hopefully they'll make sort of one cord and I can kind of put that in the middle of the paracord. We'll see if that works at all. Start by just laying them all flat on a piece of tape, sticking it down, and then roll that up. Kind 
kind of gonna do the same thing with the paracord strands because I think that might help me wrap the ball chain up inside of it. Not really worrying about what order these strands are. It's not necessarily from longest to shortest. It's all gonna be a bundle in the end. might be the trickiest part of the whole build. It's getting this little piece of paracord end through the little hole that's been drilled. Yep, that wasn't so hard. All right, we have our many strands of paracord kind of surrounding the ball chain. Next step is to secure this end of everything to the handle with a whole lot of electrical tape. As soon as I wrap this in athletic tape, it'll be good to go. But before I do that, I like to go around and use a little bit of electrical tape every foot and a half or so just to hold it all together. There we have it, our whip is all wrapped up. It's nice and flexible, which is what we want. We do still have the fall, which is exposed, and that's the part that moves around really fast. So I think we're just about ready to test this out, but there is one little addition we're gonna make. YouTuber Caliber Whips suggested that if we added a cracker to our whip instead of just having it end in a fall, it would work 50 times better. I think we were getting a pretty good whip crack when we just had the fall without a cracker on it. But I figure if we can get any improvement on it, let's try it. Before I was leaving the end of the paracord unfused so that as it unraveled a little bit, it would act as a cracker a little bit on its own. Now because I'm going to add dedicated cracker to it, I am going to fuse it shut. As the Caliber Whips channel suggests in their video showing how to add a cracker, instead of tying one on, I'm actually going to put a small hole in the end of the fall and loop the cracker through that so it shouldn't be able to come off at all. I'm using a nail to poke a hole right through the end of my fall here. And then so it doesn't close back up when I take the nail out, I'm just gonna hit it with the lighter again. Got a nice little eye hole. We should be able to fit a cracker through there pretty easily. The cracker itself I'm going to make out of one of the inside strands from our paracord. This piece is about 18 inches long and it's definitely more than I'll need, but I'll trim off any excess when I'm finished. To start, let's just fold the piece of nylon string in half and we'll hold it by that folded point. This nylon string is twisted together and you can see that if I twist it one direction, it actually comes apart a little bit. So what I'm going to try and do is using my thumb and one finger, I'm going to roll the two strands apart. And then once they're nice and loose, I'll hold them close together and twist them back together. You can see that by twisting it apart first, it makes it so that when they twist back together, they hold themselves that way a little bit. I'm now going to move my grip up to where it's already twisted and then I'm going to repeat that process for four or five inches down this piece of thread. If you've seen our video on how to make rope, this is a fairly similar idea. You twist the individual strands so that they're under a little bit of tension and then when they twist together, they stay wound very nicely. All right, you can now see that the two separate strands have become wound together four, maybe five inches. So now I'm just going to tie a figure eight knot right where they're finished winding together. As I predicted, I have a little bit of extra cord, so I'm just gonna slice that off. And now what I want to do is sort of the opposite of when I was twisting it up. I want to untwist these strands all the way so that they just kind of turn into individual fibers or fluff. There we go, we have our cracker. So now let's take the end of our cracker and fit it through the eye hole in the bottom of our fall. Now we want to unravel the loop in one end of the cracker so that we can fit the other end of the cracker through the hole. Now when we pull this tight, our cracker is tied in a knot around the end of our fall and should never be able to come off unless it breaks. There we go, we've got our ball and chain whip. We've added a cracker onto it. Let's decorate the handle and then go test it out.
Beautiful. Let's go test it out. Here we go, we've got the ball chain whip. First impression is that this definitely is lighter weight than the whip with the BBs in it. But we're gonna see how it works. It does have the cracker on it. Maybe that'll make it easier to whip. Keep your eyes safe. Whoa, there it goes. That is pretty easy. It's a little bit quieter of a sound, I think. All right, let's try the other one as a comparison. I don't know. They both crack pretty easily with just a little bit of practice. I think we can definitely say that the ball chain whip is working. And I do feel that the cracker is making it a little bit easier to crack. I don't know if it's the whole weight of the whip or just the difference in having the cracker, but I think we have a slightly higher pitched sound with the cracker on this whip. Either way, it cracks. I don't know if I can pull this off. That was both. There you have it, a few techniques on how to crack a whip and a way to build your bull whip a little bit faster than filling paracord with BBs. The BBs in the paracord whip has a little bit more weight to it, which I enjoy, and it costs a little bit less to build. The ball chain whip is definitely faster to put together because you don't have to fill any paracord with BBs, which can be pretty time consuming. And of course, if you want to add a cracker onto the end of your whip, it can make it work a little bit better. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a 50 times improvement over where I was before, but I think it's probably about 20% easier to crack with the cracker on it. A big shout out to Adam CWM for the inspiration we got from his 15 minute bull whip tutorial. He's a whip cracking professional and we've put a link in the description so you can go check him out and tell him we sent you. Again, if you're gonna be making a bull whip, make sure you take safety precautions wearing eyewear and long sleeves so that if something goes wrong, you don't injure yourself. Other than that, this is a really fun build that doesn't take too long, especially if you use the chain rather than the BBs. Thanks for joining us for this project today and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then. This video, like most of our videos, is brought to you by Electrical Tape. Electrical Tape. It holds the world together. Quit grabbing each other. My cracker just tied itself in a knot around the fall. I don't know if there was something I was supposed to do to avoid that. Probably even with the cracker around it like that. Yup. Hey guys, it's Grant here. I'm not in a position to be in these videos right now, but that's exactly why Nate's here. Nate is the man. He's got some incredible talent, and I think he can pretty much build anything. So let him know in the comments what you want to see, and he can probably make it happen.